Hi, I'm Lawrence Ellis from Black Mountain Honey. Welcome to another episode of No Nonsense Beekeeping. Today, I'm gonna to give you a quick look through my 2021 overwintered nukes. So, may seem a little bit early. I always get a really, really kind of good start on the season with my overwintered nukes. We aim to take between 40 and 60 overwintered nukes through the winter and try and limit the amount that die during the winter. We have a really good success with the amount that we can get through using a number of different poly nukes. Um, and I think the key to our success is the fact that we use a good strain of B. Um, so all of our queens are at F1 bred by us to an F1 um, from an F0 mother and then the fact that we start them off really, really early in the season. It's early July at the moment, and that's when I like to have my nukes set up. I like to have the queens mated by then. I like to have at least one frame of brood, some stores, and I can feed them straight away. That means they've got plenty of time to build up into a strong colony. I'm not rushing at the last minute to get them up to a size where they can suitably overwinter. So like I say, we're at the beginning of July, we've got one frame of brood and at least one frame of stores. Some of them are bigger than that at the moment, um, and I'll have to keep them in check by taking brood out of those and balancing other hives. So as long as I've got some strong colonies, some weaker colonies, I can balance them and get them all to the position whereby they're going into winter and they're on at least six frames of brood. Um, now that's, that might seem strange for a six frame nuke, having six frames of brood, but the way that I overwinter them, and I'll show you in the video here, is I actually overwinter them on a six over six format. It's exactly the same format that I use for collecting swarms in bait hives, um, and that is a standard six frame poly nuke, and then another six frame box on top. Um, to give me 12 brood frames in total. Now, I don't care whether the three frames are at the top and three frames at the bottom, or it's just six frames at the bottom, bottom and honey above. It doesn't matter to me. What I'm looking for is six frames, full frames of brood in these colonies come around October time. And at October time, all of my treatments are finished. All of my feeding is finished. I can close up those colonies and I don't need to go back into them until kind of around Christmas time when I do my oxalic varroa treatment. And then at that point, I can look into them as well, assess where they are in terms of feed, and if I need to, I can give them some fondant. So in this video, we're just gonna take a quick look in. I'll show you the queens. I'll show you where they've just got mated and just started to lay that worker brood and just give you that snapshot of where they are early July. And then we're gonna follow this up later on in the season, maybe kind of middle of August, back end of August, and show you how well these nukes have come on and how strong they need to be to successfully overwinter them in this format. So I'll get my suit on and we'll take a look. So it's rubbish weather here today. Again, we should have beautiful summer weather with really nice flows and it's just like 15 degrees and overcast and, and rainy so the bees aren't getting out much i'm going around just checking that all of my nooks are mated though um, and if they're not mated and they turn into laying workers i can go in and do an, uh, an interaction with them um, good news is though is i've got really excellent success on my mating this year i've done a full round and i'm on 38 out of 40 on the first round that's mated so that's really really good very very happy with that indeed so we're just going to take a look in a couple of these boxes and show you what they look like. So this is what the bees are looking like at the moment. Three frames of bees there, maybe, maybe just four frames of bees. Um, they're not very happy about me opening them up because it is raining quite heavily now. Um, but I just want to give you a kind of snapshot as to what they look like on the 3rd of July. So then you can see how they grow over the year and then what they look like going into winter. So I pull a couple of frames out. You can see the queen and then you can see the worker brood as well. Not sure how well the camera is going to get that. You can see there though, fully laid up with eggs. And there we have the first round of worker brood. This pattern will improve over the year. Um, that is the first round, so you always kind of say if it's first round, you give them another go at it. That's pretty good though for a first round. Um, come back here in three weeks and you'll see, be able to kind of assess the pattern, the pattern properly. Again, none of that brood is capped there, but you can quite clearly see nice pattern, lots and lots of uncapped brood there. Come back in a few days, that'll be fully capped. That's the third frame of brood that we've got. And then we've got a really nice heavy frame of capped stores as well. 
So the bees are doing well, they're bringing in enough food. They're already thinking about how they're getting prepared for wintering. They're bringing in the food to see them through the long winter months. So there's the queen. She's darting around a bit. She's there. She's not marked yet. She's an absolute spitting image of her mother um, with orange higher up towards the wings and then darker as you get down towards where she's gonna lay her eggs. Almost identical to her mother. What I would always suggest this time of the year when the colonies are small, get them marked. Makes it so much easier when they're really small colonies like this. Very rarely that I can't find a queen in a colony this size. In a big colony when they're swarming, never find them. It's so difficult. So take advantage of the colony being small. Keep your pen always in your top pocket with your cage. That wasn't set up, that genuinely is always there. Um, and mark your queens when you get the opportunity. So there's the marked queen now. Really nice, healthy F1 marked queen, bred by us here in North Wales. Just wanna show you the inside of this straight away. Um, it's early July here, but yeah, we're feeding our nukes, why wouldn't we? Um, we, we don't cross contaminate between any of our honey supers. These are destined to overwinter, so we'll treat them early for Varroa. Um, we won't do an autumn treatment because you do an autumn treatment to align with your honey supers. If you do a treatment earlier in the year, you knock them back um, and then you do another treatment in autumn when the Varroa is the worst. So you're just kind of disrupting that life cycle as best as you possibly can. So these will receive a treatment over the next week or so and we're feeding them fondant now to keep them going just in case there's any lean spots. Um, and then we'll feed them with two to one syrup at the end of the year. But we find that it's very rare that our nukes do need feeding. They don't need to create a huge amount of stores for themselves um, and they can kind of go out and forage that for themselves. And if they get a good run on the ivy, they get more than enough food. But I think that's a really important note to kind of end on is that you need to plan your strategy. We've been over strategies previously, um, but don't blindly follow the rule book which says you do your Varroa treatment at the end of the summer. The reason that rule book uh, is designed in that way is so you can take your honey off. So overwintered nukes, if you're preparing them solely for overwintering, you can feed them, you can do your Varroa treatments, you can do absolutely everything to them because all you're trying to get out of that is a colony through to the next year. So you need to do what's best for the colony, not what's best for you as the beekeeper trying to take the honey away from them. Now, if this was a colony in April and I had a nuke that I was building up for um, honey production that year, I definitely wouldn't be feeding them if they had sufficient stores and I definitely wouldn't be doing any kind of varroa treatments or anything that could risk contamination to the honey supers. So it's, it's horses for courses. You need to understand what your end goal is and tailor your strategy to meet that end goal. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nukes in this colony here. I've got a couple over there that aren't mated yet. Um, in total, we're going for 60 nukes this year and we're pretty much at our quota already for that. Um, so what I will do is some of them are really strong. Some of them are on seven frames of brood already on double boxes. So all we'll do for them is we'll split them and add either a, a queen cell from one of our colonies or a mated queen cell from another colony. And that will give us our quota going into the year. So we'll follow up this video later on in the year with an update as to how these overwintered nukes for 2021 are getting along. Um, and if you're interested in buying one, we start taking deposits for them around September, October in 2020. And we sell out every single year without fail. The overwintered nukes are in huge demand, especially really good quality overwintered nukes that come from a known heritage. They're calm, they're gentle, they're really good disease resistant bees. They produce a lot of honey. Great for bee beekeeping in your garden. It's exactly the kind of nuke that you want when you're getting into beekeeping as a beginner. So that's it for today's video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the bell so you're notified of every video and I'll see you next time.